Um, hey, Gary. Yes, sir. I believe the representative is over in the attendees uh, box. She's got her hand raised. Okay, I'll, I will jump her over. Thank you, sir. Or maybe she just wants to wave to us because she doesn't want to join us. <laughs> <laughs> And she can hear us, so here she comes. Okay. <laughs> well, hello. Hi, how's everybody doing? We are doing just great. great. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm excellent. Yeah, I think I had the wrong um, join link because it asked me to register. And I said, okay, I know this is not right, but I'll just sit here. And um, you know, nope, you're fine. I, I saw your hand raised over there. And I told Gary, we're, we've, we've gotten good at, at recognizing when we've, we've got somebody in the wrong room, and we just swipe them out over into the room with us. So you are Fantastic. absolutely fine. I want to, um, I want to be respectful of your time. And it is uh, three o'clock. And I do see that we're up on Facebook. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So I want to welcome everybody to our weekly legislative update, and uh, we are so lucky and fortunate to have uh, Representative Regina Lewis Ward with us today. Uh, Representative, welcome. Thank you so much, um, Chair, for having me today and being allowed to spend this um, this time with you. I really appreciate um, the opportunity to give an update on what's been going on at the um, at the Gold Dome. Well, I, I and thank you. It's it's you know we've been we've been very fortunate that um, our our Henry County delegation has has really embraced this opportunity to to be virtual and to be able to talk with the the businesses and the employers and the community and and, and we've had a pretty wide spectrum of, of people join us in these conversations and so uh, I am so grateful to all of you for your willingness to uh, join us online. This is your first year in your first session. Am I correct? You are correct. And the days are going by really quickly. We're already at day three of day for 40 days. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's been kind of uh, uh, drinking from a fire hose a bit just to get 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 your feet on the ground and figure out where they're all moving. Um, I didn't hear that. Can you say that again? Oh, kind of like drinking from a fire hose, trying to figure out how everything's moving around. And yes, by the time we find out where everything is, the session will be over. <laughs> Well, and you've, you've had a pretty interesting um, first year. Uh, uh, anything from Senate Bill 22 to HB 479. I mean, we could go through a whole fun list of things that you've got to, to weigh in on. Absolutely. And uh, as you know, this past Monday was crossover day. And we did pass, um, the House did pass um, HB 479 which um, a law had been on the book since um, 1893. And that law gives citizens the arrest powers if they witness um, a crime. And on Monday night, um, I'm happy to announce that by unanimous vote, the House repealed that law. And that bill is uh, making its way over to the Senate. And we hope that the Senate will equally pass uh, pass, and then on to the governor's desk, and hopefully he will sign it as well. Well, thank you. We, we share that same hope. Absolutely, we share that same hope. Uh, um, it's, it's, it's sad that that's been around so long. And, and I believe I saw today that uh, almost every state in the country, when they started looking, has something similar, if not the same, on their books that is that old and, and misused. So um, thank you for, for you and the House being such leaders in that, uh, in that effort to, to get that repealed. Uh, I, I, I failed to introduce Miss Christy Tuning, who is uh, a past chair of the board and also uh, chair of the Government Affairs Committee. And so she's joining me on these calls. And so Christy, I'm going to turn it over to you for a bit. Sure, yes. Um, 
thank you for uh, serving our, the Henry County area and um, just putting yourself out there uh, to represent us. Um, tell me what surprised you the most about um, being a representative since you're um, way into your, your term here. What surprised me the most? Mm -hmm. um, I guess I kind of expected um, a more structured um, environment Meaning, meaning that you had to report the same day and you will leave the same day, kind of like, I guess, that corporate, you come in at nine o'clock and you can't leave until four. It's nothing like that, <laughs> right, at all. So uh, whatever day, whatever time the, the speaker sets to start the session is the time that we have to arrive. And it could be from um, 10 o'clock one day, one o'clock p.m. the next day, you're off in between that those days so it's really um that's what surprised me the most the fact that it was not structured um as as a business would be and i don't know why it's government so i don't know why i expected it <laughs> <laughs> well and i think yeah. that's what confuses quite a few people too is it's it's constitutionally obligated to the 40 days but it's it doesn't have to be consecutive it can be two days this week that you're in session and then three days next week and it, as long as you and really the it, you don't have to do anything but pass the budget i mean that's i mean you do much more than that but the only thing you're obligated is the budget right absolutely the one thing that we are obligated to do is to pass the state budget and um house bill 81 did uh, make its way through through the house and um, as you know last session the budget um, slashed um, the education by 950 million in the current budget FY 22 500 and about 67 million of those of that has been restored to, to the budget I mean they didn't fully restore the 950 million but almost 600 million has been restored to the education um, piece of that. And, and also, um, this budget did not expand Medicaid. We would have liked to see um, more Georgians be able to access quality medical care. It didn't, it didn't do that. Uh, well, one other thing it did do, it put about $10 million into the broadband infrastructure because there are some areas that don't have um, connectivity. And that's very, very important, um, particularly in this COVID environment. Um, some of your viewers may wonder why I'm mentioning that with Henry County not being a rural area. But um, to my surprise, um, I have gotten calls from, from um, residents who live in Henry County yeah. who don't have access to, to broadband. So it can be an urban community, but then there are, you know, spots where people live on farms or that, you know, they have many acres, you know, back up in the cut where, mm -hmm. where they, where they actually um, don't have internet service. So hopefully, you know, when this budget does pass, we'll be able to get some, um, some service out there to, to these families um, who attend our Henry County schools who don't have access to, to, um, to broadband. And one other thing that this um, FY22 budget does is it adds um, about $58 million into the budget for um, disability, um, adult disability care. And again, that's also very, very important during this COVID times, because as you know, um, mental health, um, even prior to COVID has been a great concern. And now that we've been sheltering in place, not um, communicating or not, or not being face to face with our loved ones that adds an, an additional stress um, to to that to that area. So those are some of the highlights for for the budget that did um, the house version of the budget that did that did pass. Thank you. Thank you. I, I you know, it, we were marking uh, uh, the, the one year anniversary this week of the, the pandemic. And there were so many inequities and, and um, you know, just so many layers that some of them we knew, we knew that childcare, early childcare 
was a concern. I don't think we realized how serious it was until the pandemic hit. Um, you know, I think for those of us that had internet access, we just assumed, like you yeah. said, we assumed everybody had it. And that yeah. as the schools were going virtual, we found out there were many pockets of Henry County that did not have it. And, and we, you know, tried to work with libraries in different places that we could help facilitate that. And, and, and you know, um, great work by the school district to try to keep the equity and, and, and you know, making sure that all of the, the one to one devices and that. But I know that I know that Internet connectivity and that is near and dear to Christy as well, because that is something that her EMC and, and the state's EMCs are working on in, in a lot of these areas. And so, um, you know, I know she's watching some of that very closely as well. So yes, thank absolutely. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, and, and, and um, so I'm, you know, we started with the nice conversation and everything. Now we're going to go in the tough stuff. I've got, and, and, and this was on my list, but it's it's funny. I've got a couple people here that are asking as well. Let's talk about voter and election changes. <laughs> we'll just go with changes. Um, I think we, you know, I think we can all agree that some of this might be a little too much uh, uh hmm. I'm going to put suppression out there. Um, I think that some of these changes in that I think are more of a, of a knee jerk response. And, and so what is it, what one, I guess some of the questions here are, what do you uh, expect for passage or what do you see is happening within that? Um, but what are some of the things that the community can do to help support a, a more balanced voting reform? So as we know, um, H, the House Bill 531 um, was the omnibus um, piece of legislation that seeks to change the voting laws. And um, it is, seeks to change the voting laws in, in several different ways. One, one way is banning private public partnership with the Board of Elections. Um, across the state, the Board of Elections has relied on maybe $30 million in private grants funding to, to run an election, to hire their staff, to buy equipment, to process ballots. And we all know that private and public partnerships are what gets projects going. Right. If you ban that, if you ban the elections board receiving funds from private entities, Who's left holding that that bill? Our counties, right? Can our counties or should our counties support get high profile elections or even even the smaller elections? So banning that that will put a strain on the amount of resources that the Department of Elections um, will have. And another way um, that bill seeks to change the law is to cut Sunday voting. Right. We know that as souls to the polls and that that's a day where churches get together and they go out and as a group collectively, they go they go to vote. Um, it's marketed as such. And once you ban that again, you are kind of tying the hands of, of that group of people to right. get together and go out on, on that Sunday to vote. Um, it also seeks not to use the ballot drop boxes as we know it. They want to use the ballot boxes only during the operations of um, the Office of Elections while they're voting. So, so yeah, um, you mentioned that it may be a knee-jerk reaction. Um, some would agree that it's a <laughs> knee-jerk reaction. Uh, but whatever, whatever law, so we, the House passed that, and now it's over to the Senate. Uh, you know, it may come back with some with some variations. Who knows? And then it will go on to the governor. Hopefully, um, Governor Kemp will not sign 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 that bill um, in its current version. Hopefully, he will not sign any bill that suppresses any any voters' rights to to the ballot box. So, so, ma'am, what what for your constituents in the Henry County businesses and that that are and, and the, their employees and that that are watching, what would you ask of them with within this this voting this voting change? Right, right to your senators and also right to the governor 
and explain and, and really be explicit about how it will impact the the community as a whole and ask that they not pass pass the bill okay to vote thank no you. to be specific, vote no yeah thank yeah. you I, I don't know if you're aware but we uh starting last fall in 20 no 19 uh, 2019, I'm, I'm so confused in what year I'm even in. Um, we started diversity, equity, and inclusion discussions and with the pandemic and, and the relationships and everything that, that came up in, in the second quarter and third quarter, we've been having a lot more discussions with the community dialogues around uh, uh, biases and race relations and, and, and other areas of equity. And, and so this is one that we definitely um, don't want to sit on the sidelines because it is a, it is a matter of equity and and fairness and um, have you did you see did you hear uh, President Carter's comments on that? I think it was I think his uh, his library put out I think it was yesterday or this morning, um, oh. and basically his statement was we must not promote confidence among one segment of the electorate by restrict restricting the participation of others. Mm. And I think, and I think that's really the 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 one message that we would have is that's fine if there are people that are concerned with integrity in that, but let's not take away that confidence that the other side has as well. And so, um, well, you, you know, this um, how many times have we did we count the ballots recently? Um, yeah, there there was no nothing to really be concerned about. It was stated over and over again. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think I thank you for those that conversation and that. Um, uh, Christy, do you have any questions, or or, or I will ask uh, the representative to, to <laughs> see if there's anything that we missed. But if you have anything, I want to make sure we get that in. Yeah, I do. Um, I noticed that you have um, been busy authoring some um, house bills as well, too, and um, I'll point out the first one is House Bill One Ninety Seven which is um, about sick leave for care of immediate family. So you want to tell us a little bit about that one? So um, you may or may not know, I grew up um, in New York City and I worked um, for New York City Transit Authority. And while I was working with the Transit Authority, we were given, um, I think we had four years of sick leave to use when we went out for maternity leave. We, we had, they would keep our job for 48 months before we had to come back. And that gave me such a peace of mind, not having to worry about taking care of, of, of a baby, a newborn baby, and worrying about whether or not my job would be there when, when I returned. And relocated to Georgia and started meeting, meeting a lot of um, women, particularly single women, who cared for um, children who had chronic conditions, it could be chronic asthma, it could be, could be something else, just chronic conditions. And they would worry about if they took a day off, whether or not their job would be available for them when they got back. And you know, someone who has a chronic condition, they're in and out of the doctor's office. And if you're working, and you don't have sick leave or you don't have, you can't use a sick leave for a, a family member, that, that's an added stress and burden upon you to worry about whether or not your job will be there. And so there's a current law now that says you can use your sick leave uh, for immediate family members if you work for an employer who has 25 or more employees. My bill simply changes that 25 employees down to 18 more employees. So if you have a sick leave program currently, it doesn't mandate that you um, get a sick leave program, but if you currently have a sick leave program and you have 18 or more employees, your employees should be able to use their sick leave for immediate family care, for the care of an immediate family member. And with COVID-19, you know, people are, living together and, and you know, people who um, have elderly parents, instead of putting them in um, a hospice that's away, they're letting them stay home 
under hospice. And if you're working, you know, you have all these concerns about caring for a, a person who is, um, who I, I'm, I'm trying to read what popped up on the screen and talk to you at the same time. Um, <laughs> um, so so it, it just opens the window a little bit more for more employees to, to use their sick leave for an immediate, for the care of an immediate family member. Okay, thank you, thank you. I, one of the questions is, how was the 18 determined, the number? I'm sorry, how could the oh, 18? Yeah, how was the 18 uh, employees determined? I don't, so we looked at some of the, we looked at some of the neighboring states okay. and that was a threshold that, that, they, that they used, they used 18. Okay, it's, it's, it's always interesting to, to find uh, the, um, you know, the where, where some of this starts from. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, okay, well, uh, Chrissy, anything else? Uh, you know, she had two other, I mean, we can okay. mention those just a little bit. Sure. Um, House Bill 329, which um, is just asking to suspend school system ratings and report cards for this year. Do you want to talk about that for just a minute? Um, absolutely. Um, so we know the school system report cards are used to um, identify improvements for the school. Also, when someone is moving into a neighborhood, they take a look at that to kind of gauge whether or not um, it's, a, it's a school that they would like for their children to, to attend. The last school system rating that was conducted was the 2018 school year. And there was not one for 2019. And I'm recommending that they suspend it for 19 and 20 using the same rating that they used in 2018. I think it's unfair now to assess the school system's rating with COVID um, because you really can't determine what's where the improvements need to be because some schools have a hybrid in-class remote some schools were totally virtual. So other states have suspended the school system rating and um, I thought it would be a great idea. And some of the, the superintendents and um, organizations would agree that um, it would be a good idea to not to have to rely on um, the school system rating or the school system report card for 2020. And if we can use the pre-COVID rating forward or until the pandemic um, disseminates and we get back to normal, it would be a good fit. Definitely. Yes, absolutely. And then um, House Bill 279 is a conservation um, bill. So talk about that just a second. Oftentimes the neighborhood <laughs> residents don't know what's coming, um, what projects are being built in the neighborhood and what environmental impact these projects will have. So um, House Bill 279 um, asks that the local authorities post on their website any environmental impacts that projects will have that will affect the, the citizens. Currently, they're, now they're required to post it in the local um, organ. We just wanted to go one step further and have them actually put it on, on their website. Great idea. Good. Great Good. idea. All right. Well, Christy, thank you. Thank you for your research. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. <laughs> Representative, uh, as we as we wrap up the half hour, again, we want to be respectful of your time because your day, I'm sure, is not over yet. Um, but is there anything you'd like to add to, to the Henry County uh, uh, residents and employers in that? I just want to say thank you very, very much for all the work that that the chamber does and um i look forward to um continuing um, our relationship and thank you absolutely. so much for having me today absolutely we hope to uh when i talked to uh representative douglas last week um we talked about kind of a wrap up later uh maybe sometime in april after you all have had a chance to to get some sleep and relax a little bit so <laughs> after session uh we'll send out an invite and hopefully get all of you back to talk about some of the highlights and and uh um, some some key pieces that that you're all proud of and, and what you're looking at going into the year ahead. So uh, hopefully we can we can get that scheduled with you. Great, thank you. Unfortunately, the bills that I introduced did not make crossover day, but um, they're not dead yet. That is correct, and there's always hope. Yes, always hope. Well, thank you so very much. I appreciate your time. Be safe uh, down at the Capitol and. Uh, 
uh, continue to do great things for your district and for Henry County and that we appreciate everything that you do. Thank you. Again, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Our pleasure, our pleasure. All right, thank Bye. you all for tuning in. And uh, next week, next Wednesday, we will have the uh, virtual Henry Day at the Capitol. So we'll be getting some information out later this week on that, but plan on that for uh, Wednesday morning. We're gonna change it up to the morning uh, for, for the virtual day at the Capitol, but I, we've got some really great things that we're looking forward to bringing to you. So uh, have a great week and we'll see you next week. Christy, thank you again and, and uh, good to see you online. Thank you, have a great day. You too. Uh -huh. Bye.